Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show, the weekly mod collection demo shop update. Last week, the European demo shop was being strange, only uploading one guitar and having way too many in stock, and I did call it. They had a huge sale this week. Because I'm around 3 or 4 a.m., I started to get messages from everybody living in that area. The guitar I wanted was on sale at the price that I needed, and I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Sadly, this custom light prototype has moved on to a new home officially now, but who knows, maybe I'll still end up getting it eventually. I mean, it's not necessarily one I have to have, but it is kind of cool. But this big sale was 25% off fair condition, 20% off good condition, and 15% off very good. And as I was telling you, we had three pages. Today, we're just left with less than one. So keeping in mind, these are European market, which always sells at a premium, and they have all taxes included. 2500 for these SG customs was crazy. These studios were fantastic. They like dumped a whole boatload of those studios into the shop. There were ROs for $4,300, which is a pretty all right price. That's pretty stellar for a $335. And this thing was kind of weird. $335 figure with a $390 neck. We had a unique 57 gold top. One of those interesting 275s. But I'm kind of surprised the modern double cut here is still for sale, but <laughs> something is wrong with reverb. That's a lot more than $55 off. So that was fun, but let's get to the mod collection. The first one is a Les Paul studio called Marvelous Elements. So we got some black, some gold, and kind of like a grayish silver going on. It's not my favorite design in the world, but it looks okay. Kind of gives me the Hitman Les Paul vibes, kind of like a vest going on here. But see, this is what I'm talking about. They also did it on the back, but look at this neck. It's got a reverse burst going on, and then this color is a lot cooler than it initially seemed on the front. It's got a little bit of like a metallic blue to it. It was pretty cool. Next up, look at this rustic looking Amber Natural 275. So if you need to learn about this model, you can check out my full review and demo. The demo shop used to have these things all the time, but then they kind of became scarce. But this one has these crusty dog ear P90 covers on here, no pit guard. Really plain wood grain on this one with an overly ambered natural hue. I dig it. But then they give you the shocker by having a crazy flame back. Nice. And then we have a very interesting non-reverse Firebird 3. We'll have to adjust the contrast here so you can actually see what's going on. We've got two single coils and then a regular Firebird style pickup. And then we have the addition of three controls here. I would guess that turns each of them on and off so you can get any combination you want. And then maybe just have three volumes and a master tone. But it's also got the Vibrola. This would probably be a pretty fun studio guitar. So let's see how I did looking at the description. Yep, got that right. Got this right, but what? Melody Maker neck and middle. Okay, I thought they were saying the neck up here was from a Melody Maker. No, that makes sense. It's a shame we couldn't have had higher end single coils. 4200 seems a bit pricey, but next we've got a Les Paul Classic. It's in that smokehouse burst color, but apparently they've done this one up in satin, if that's a little bit more your style. This color works pretty well with this top and the blackout vibes. And this baked chestnut SG tribute. It looks very similar to that previous color. I dig that. Especially because you can just barely see the maple neck right here and then you've got your rosewood fretboard and you've got an overly saturated Gibson logo with all the same to match on the back. That's cool, as far as tributes go. And then take a look at the 70s Flying V. They call this one Burnt Clementine. This thing reminds me a lot of the Sammy Hagar Red Rocker Explorer if it had been left out in the sun and the clear coat had yellowed, as well as the pick guard. So this thing's instantly cool in my book. But they did that complete refin job on it. This was pretty nice, 335 Ocean Water Metallic. It's a blue 335, not just a regular blue, a metallic blue as the name suggested. And it looks like they played with our pickups. We've got more crocodile skin ones and ambered out plastics. But then they decided to leave the neck not metallic so you get a little bit of wood grain in your life. Next was a beautiful standard 50s. They gave it a new satin finish, but that top is fantastic for one of those. And then they basically blacked everything out, gave it Dirty Fingers pickups. I mean, you could call this like a 70s tribute Les Paul standard and probably be pretty accurate. Or perhaps we should call it 80s. But if you want to get technical, Dirty Fingers did come out in the late 70s. Canyon Sunrise is what they called this Les Paul classic. Kind of just looks like they painted over a gold top or something with some red. Gives me Jimmy Page number three vibes, but without the bender. Don't pass over this Explorer Custom too quick. It's not just black, it's black cherry. Not that we can really tell from the stock photography. Does it have a slight red border around it? I, I really can't tell. Maybe our friendly editor here can uh, play with the contrast and see if it'll come out a bit more. Because that's just looking like a really, 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 really ultra deep red that it's kind of like oxblood finish. If you like that other 335 but you didn't like that it wasn't Custom Shop, here's a Custom Shop version. That, I gotta say, looks pretty spectacular. 
but this one does have the matching neck. And this was another one that just looked black from far away, but then you actually click on the photos and you zoom in here. They call it Deep Forest Green. I would love to see this if anybody bought it. Because it might look incredibly dark, but you can tell there's some sparkles and goodness in there, and it's probably going to have that very nice dark green that's nearly perfect for St. Patrick's Day. And of course, also blacked out hardware. But whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Darn it! I didn't go back here to look. They added a heel cap made of moto. I wonder if that's just pick guard like material that they just glued on there and it won't actually look good in person. Is that under the finish or did they just glue it on there? But it does look like they refinished the entire thing. But it seems they've started to pull away from the matching headstocks, which I understand it can be a bit extreme on some guitars. That was pretty fair for everything that they did. Next, we have a classic in Crimson Voodoo. There's another one that just looks black, but then if you really get in here and we adjust the contrast, you can definitely tell that's a very dark red. You've got the Voodoo style pickup. You've got a red switch tip a la Buckethead with a matching back and sides. And if you got bad breath, you got Spearmint Blast over here. Definitely a slightly darker hue of it. Cool witch hat knobs. But man, the mod collection and demo shop guys must have a lot of black chrome hardware to burn through because we've been getting an overload of blacked out guitars the past two weeks. Oh my goodness, that last sparkly one we were talking about, I guess I just completely missed this because this is the one I had saw on launch day that I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. It's another sparkly one, but what would you call this finish? The website decided to call it Mud Fairy Gloss. <laughs> Maybe that's a reference to something I don't understand. And we've got an interestingly re-inked serial number going over top of what originally would have been stamped into the headstock because this isn't a custom shop so it's kind of unique in that aspect but that was a really cool color for the same price as a triple a top but this right here i saved the best for last advertised as an sg standard ebony satin finish 2200 bucks this is one of those Captain Kirk Douglas SGs. They sold brand new for 2,500 bucks, but the used market was dictating between like 35 to 4,000 for some time. It's cooled off a little bit now, where 28 to 35 is about right. But it originally would have looked like what you're seeing here on the screen. If you missed it, that's a faux vibrola, meaning you still have the beautiful vibrola plate that these things originally came with. But if you're like me and you love the look, but you don't like the functionality, they put like EDS 1275 style stop bar tailpiece on it. I love it. It looks good, but they put a new pick guard on here, got rid of the middle pickup, put a P94 in the neck position, and then instead of a volume control, we've got some mini toggles here, and you can find these in ebony, but not ebony satin. So all things considered, I thought that was a fantastic deal. So yeah, maybe not the most exciting week, but there were actually some good stuff in there. But now let's head on over to the US demo shop. They must have been taking offense to me calling them boring for the past year because they stepped things up a notch here this week. Or perhaps it was just luck of the draw. So there was a 1974 Les Paul Custom, 5,200 bucks. I mean, you might as well just buy an original, but depending on the condition that you're going for, an original might be slightly more, but you can definitely get an original early 70s for this kind of money. But it's got a nice honking volute. Not sure why we're going with Grover tuners unless you're going for one of those like custom factory ordered ones that might have had it. Typically you'll see the Kloos and Waffle backs. This 59 reissue was at 5400 bucks. Just looks so wrong without the poker chip. But that's not why I wanted to share it with you. There's like a huge ding in the top on it. From this photo I really thought they had buffed that down to a satin. But no apparently it's still glossy. And then we've got some sort of a micro blend mesh back here. But hey, check this out, another 76 Les Paul Deluxe reissue. We had actually reviewed this model, and I always thought they were just repurposed Mike Ness Deluxe. Maybe it started that way, but I think now it's just like a, if you call us up and talk to us about it, we might make you one. But recently, I had just learned that Pancake Bodies actually have multiple layers, and when I reviewed this guitar, I was really excited that these indeed had the Pancake layer. Excuse the extreme orange peel over here for now while I'm making my point. So I went back to the video to see, are they doing that additional layer between the maple top and the mahogany body, or are they just doing the mahogany body ones? And it does not appear they're doing the true style. But to be fair, I don't think a lot of people realize the Pancake bodies were multi-stacked like that. So that's why I keep bringing it up because I want to teach people the true meaning behind pancake bodies. So now back to our orange peely photo, you might see right here and go, well that looks like the maple layer to me. For my review video, that's actually just unscraped binding. And then there was a 59 reissue. I thought it had a pretty nice top. But a pretty face isn't what gets you featured on my show. 
I thought it had a particularly interesting back. Now feel free to tell me whatever you want to see, but I kind of see a man's face and he's got like a big eye right here and a little eye, like he's a little bit crazy. And then he's got like a, a kind of a scary smile. But this is like his hairline right here and then his ear and his other ear. It's either that or it's like a dog, like a pit bull. It's jaws coming up over here. I mean, there's a lot of things you could see. Whatever you see, it's very concentrated wood grain. Then we got this 50 standard with a very interesting top. I'm sure it looks better in person. But again, with the cool back, oddly light colored. And then an absolutely almost the best Cobra Burst special double cut custom that I've seen. But at $4,000, that's definitely a premium price tag. Gibson knows what they've got. Then we've got this lowly tribute here. It's got cool wood grain, but again with the back looking pretty nice and flame figuring in the neck. And then this SG Junior, holy cow. That is really cool mahogany wood grain. I actually had somebody message me about this one. I couldn't see their photos that they had sent me, but they said this thing was so cool I had to buy it. And yeah, now I see what you're talking about. So it's a really long wood grain this way, but then you got the big circular kinds over here. Like I've never seen an SG like this. And it appears to be a one piece mahogany body maybe even too. Even the back is surprisingly cool. The only thing that would have made this better was if this was a 2018 SG Junior that had one of those cool banner logos. Those were kind of a cool limited edition. That would have been a keeper had all the stars aligned. But holy cow, getting it at a discount on top of all that, I'm sure you could probably throw that up on reverb. Somebody would probably give you 1600 bucks for it. But then there were a couple of older guitars in 1899 Deluxe in Pelham Blue. This one's from 2015, so you gotta like 2015 specs to like that. There's kind of an older Les Paul traditional for only 1600. This one was from 2017. There was a standard 61 that got dressed up all fancily. So fancy they even bedazzled it. And then lastly, from wow, 2015. How do you take a guitar that's already kind of controversial as far as specs go? Yeah, slap a Bigsby on it. <laughs> I like it. But ah oh man, it's even a, a slug coil P90. That's definitely an acquired taste guitar. All right, Troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed the recap this week. I know I did. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.